Hey, how's it going? I hope you enjoyed your extra long weekend, and I hope you're relaxed, recharged, and ready for another trading week, month, and quarter. In this video, we got some spicy things to get into. Yes, I'll break down the overall market and share my personal trade of the day, and I'll also set you up for what to pay attention to for the remainder of this week, because I'm expecting it to be a volatile one. But in terms of some hot tamale spicy news, I want to talk about DJT. For those of you who don't know, that is the ticker symbol from the former president and potentially future president, Mr. Donald J. Trump, and his equivalent of Twitter, aka True Social. Recently, it was doing pretty, pretty well. Today, it kind of got its teeth kicked in, but that's not really the interesting news. When I wanted to research what was happening today, why there was such a percentage fall off, I found some very, very, very interesting things in its underlying data set. So I want to share that with all of you. Now, obviously, if you're new here, don't forget to like. Don't don't forget to subscribe. And with that being said, let's rock. By the time the closing bell went dingity ding 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 today, it wasn't as exciting as we wanted it to be. The Dow falls 300 points to start second quarter as Treasury yields jump. Now I'm saying it wasn't that exciting because on Thursday to conclude the last week of trading, we hit a new all-time high. So the bull camp was getting ready all weekend to see how high we could push this thing. And unfortunately, at least in the very short term, we didn't push it much more. With that being said, I was fortunate enough to get a pretty good trade today. Daily DGen report. I made 550 on the posted systematic trade. Now, I want to add a little caveat. I went on a little bit of a tilt and I was doing some other trades as I was trying to figure out a system. But since that's not really the thing that I like publicly share with everyone, it's not necessarily captured in this because I still have work to do on that particular system. But with reference to Piper's system, which is named after my cat because she's the best trader I know, around 10, 20 in the morning as you can see on the screen right now she said hey i'm actually feeling a little bit bearish based on really the momentum of the day on spy call credit spread q call credit spread you can see the levels more confident on the spy relative to the Qs, but both ended up printing so at the minimum sizing of 246 piper strategy alone secured 100 percent return today aka 54 dollars for me among the other system that i'm working out i just want to be very clear about it this is how i personally interpreted piper system today i ended up selling selling SPX, uh, some call credit spreads there, sold at 70, recouped it at 15. So I ended up making about 78, 79%, $550 before fees and after fees closer to the realm of 500. Now I'm just sharing all this because this is the Goonie trading community and I do day in and day out. So your first month is 100% free. You can see from Piper strategy today, this most minimum unit sizing you would have paid for the next month. And then obviously at my sizing, you would have paid for the entire year all in one day so if you're like hey i want to trade with other cool people i want to learn more about options i want to get into the nitty-gritty statistical nerdy mathematics breakdown of the market this is the place for you to be now just to add a little bit more flavor to it a little bit more color what really had happened and this is what was discussed in the discord the entire time was the market had a bit of a pop and then right here the ema cloud was red the entire time started to fall over and it was at this exact moment 10 20 10 30 that clearly the bears were in a bit of control and that's the trade that ended up paying wanted to share that with all of you just for the sake of transparency and now i want to take a quick step back and remind everyone that it's awesome that march is over i hope you had a good march I personally didn't. I just got chopped up with the market because historically that's exactly what the market does. March is very, very choppy. On a historic basis, April's a bit better, a bit more of a bullish grind to the upside. Now, will that play out this time around? I have absolutely no clue, but I just want to add a little bit of actual context of how April's been in the past and what maybe, just maybe, we can expect for this particular April. But yes, a slow grind to the upside. And that brings us to where the market is right now. Let me delete the arrow just so I'm as I said before, Thursday, we hit an all new high, 524.61. Today, we got real close within 20, 30 cents, but no cigar. In fact, we had a downrange bar. The high was lower. The low was lower. So this might be setting up a retest of the very bullish EMA cloud of 520. Obviously, time will tell. The Qs didn't hit a new all-time high last week. They hit it the week before. And ever since then, we've just been grinding sideways, sideways, sideways. But what is doing really well is gold. I love gold. 
hitting a new all-time high of 2,286. So to all my gold bugs watching this, congrats to you. Bitcoin, aka digital gold, is looking good today. It almost broke down. I like how it saved itself, but really we've just been consolidating sideways. It's This is the definition of being range bound. So time will tell. I'm looking for the break to the upside and a test of the current all-time high. But other than that, let's just see if 68,000 holds. And with that being said, yeah, we have similar situation in Solana. And to be honest, this is the similar setup where it's kind of bullish, but we're not at new highs and most of crypto. So I just want you to keep that of mind and that explains exactly why the crypto market cap in totality is clocking in at 2.6 trillion when the high is closer to around 2.8 so we're kind of just below it just just below it but i want to let you know that when you're looking at this remember there are other related equities that are going to be highly impacted by the movement of overall crypto namely coin check out coin c-o-i-n just recently hitting a local maxima not an all-time high taking a bit of a breather but i would argue that the trend is still bullish in the world of ai we have nvidia double topping around 960 but still holding strong i like the higher lows and as you're about to see representative to the market today everything was just like kind of slightly red just kind of slightly grinding sideways waiting for either the bull camp or the bear camp to make a big move look at amazon slightly up meta slightly up i like how it saved itself at 485 apple particularly in my mind is actually one of the weakest plays especially in the world of tech right now apple just getting clobbered all year and then that brings up the star of today's show djt now if you saw the newsletter if you've heard me talk about this on stream, you knew I was highly interested in playing to this downside gap below 5280. So today you can successfully say that, yeah, okay, it got that gap below. The EMA cloud is still favoring the bulls, but overall, yes, there was a lot of excitement with the de-spacking process from DWAC to DJT, and then it kind of had an inside day, a little bit of a breakdown, and now it's just cleaning up the chart. Where will it go from here? Well, I hope to the upside because I sold puts, so I very much want it to go up. But for those of you who are invested in it, you might be thinking, what in the world happened today? Because it did fall in excess of 20%. So I want to break down the news and then I want to share with you some of the crazy stats, facts, and figures that I found out related to DJT. Trump media plunges more than 25% after company reports net losses of $58 million in 2023. The newly public traded social media company of the former president, Donald Trump, had a total revenue of just 4.1 million last year. TMTG expects to incur operating losses for the foreseeable future. Market valuation for the company, aka DJT, is now roughly 6.5 billion. So why did it go down? Well, it's this classic issue of excitement and hype. Do the real reports match the excitement and the hype? And right now, just because there are a lot of supporters for the former president, there's quite a bit of excitement of DWAC, the approval, the switch to DJT. But now that we had some of the numbers, it just took a bit of wind out of the sail. So to me, I actually didn't think much of it until I saw this. Coming into today, there was an estimated short interest against DJT around 11.4%. It's high. We've seen higher. We know the cost of borrow is pretty high, 343%. It's very rare you get above that. Utilization is maxed out 100%. For those of you who don't know what utilization is, it's the amount of shares out on loan, which is what you have to do to take a legal, legitimate short position against the ones that could go out. So right now, 100% of the shares that could go out on loan are out on loan, as in there's not many more. So that was kind of surprising, I, I, I must admit. But the thing that literally put my jaw on the ground, and obviously by literally, I mean figuratively, check this out. Today, April 1st, this is not an April Fool's type of a day. The minimum cost to borrow, because remember, to take shares out on loan from someone, you're loaning, so you're paying an interest fee. The minimum today was 561%. Cost borrow, CTB, is based on an annual rate, just so everyone knows, but that is sky high. The average was 793, with the max being 956. People were almost paying a thousand percent rental rate to bet against DJT. As in, and I don't know if this will happen, but if it starts to go up and those shorts start to go underwater, not only are they underwater from the stock price going up, but these rental fees are numbers I have not seen anywhere else. So I wanted to share that with you because this is insane by all definitions. Thought it was crazy, thought you should know.
you should also know about what to pay attention to for the remainder of this week. Tuesday, tomorrow, Jolt's job openings comes out at 10 a.m. We're going to get the inflation report out of the Eurozone. We're going to have some PMI reports, some non-manufacturing prices. We're going to have many, many speakers starting tomorrow and going for the remainder of the week. There's multiple Fed speakers every single day. And then the crescendo will be Friday, an hour before the market opens, where we're going to get the next unemployment report. So make sure you write that all down or just sign up for the newsletter, which is 100% free. Mac Outlocals.com. It's in the description of the video. And it's also how you get connected to the Discord if you want to be in the best trading community ever known to man. But anyway, I break down the week. This time I talked about seasonality. I give you a heads up of all the major macroeconomic events. As you can see, there are a lot of different Fed speakers speaking throughout this week. Every single day starting tomorrow, Tuesday, April 7th. I let you know about earnings right now earnings season's taking a bit of a breather and arguably most important i give you the seasonality for each individual day tuesday april 2nd just want you to know it is very bullish on a historic standpoint if you look at the past 25 years worth of data this day april 2nd has favored the bulls 76 percent of the time which is much larger than the normal 50 50 skew of the market the profit factor sky high at 4.24 would from a seasonal perspective would not be surprised in the slightest if tomorrow is clearly a bullish day and then i wrap up with how all piper did in the past week and blah 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 which i just shared with you today to kick off the week crush it piper made three units I locked in 550 off the system, and I just wanted to let you know I am working on other systems in the background. Right now, today's testing did not look the best, but here's to hoping tomorrow that we crush it across the board. That's what I have for you in this video. Let me know your thoughts on DJT in a comment below. I thought the number and the metrics were interesting, but if you made it to this point in the video, obviously, thank you. But I would be very, very curious about your thoughts on the whole situation. Let me know in a comment below. That's what I have for you now. I'll catch you in the next video. Have a beautiful day.